Hundreds of pro-democracy protesters are clashing with police at a besieged university in Hong Kong. Demonstrators set fire to portions of the college where hundreds of people are believed to be barricaded inside. Police are warning that they will use live rounds if they need to to contain the crowds. CNN's Anna Corrin has been live on the ground for us in this dangerous and breaking situation. Anna, what's the situation at this hour? Well, Alison, we are still here with the protesters on the streets, uh, several blocks from the Polytechnic University where those hundreds of protesters are trapped. Uh, a short time ago, police just fired canister after canister of tear gas. We could hear just the, the pounding. And now, as you can see, these protesters have formed a front line. There are bricks in front of them. The riot police are just ahead, maybe a hundred meters. Okay, they've set a shop alight. That's what they're looking at. They have been throwing petrol bombs non-stop. And, and we can see them. <laughs> they just walk around with their petrol bombs and then light them and throw them at police. And then officers retaliate with rounds and rounds of tear gas. Rubber bullets are also being fired. But this is a game of cat and mouse, Alison. This is, is now what happens on the streets of Hong Kong. And many of these protests have, have turned out to try and divert attention from the university. They're hoping that this will attract police resources away from the university and that those inside will be freed. But the police have cordoned it off. There is no way in, no way out. They have told protesters inside the university that they must surrender. Otherwise, they will have to take over the university. Now, riot police are just moving into position. We're expecting them to either charge, which is one of the tactics. OK, oh, OK. No. All right, yeah, that's tear gas, I know, it's tear gas. But it's sometimes be a little bit close, the tear gas. And what is extraordinary, Alison, is that these protesters, they are armed with umbrellas. They are armed with umbrellas and they are taking on the police. That, they, this is what is unfolding on the streets of Hong Kong now, on a daily basis. Okay, we're just gonna get out of here. Get out of here, they're coming. Okay. And so, Anna, those are tear gas canisters that we're seeing right now being uh, lobbed from the police. So you can, that's the fire, the petrol bombs, and yes, police are just firing, you can hear the, okay, just let's move back, let's move back. Okay, all right, no, they are, all right, let's go back. This is when the police charge. Okay, go. Okay, we're all okay. We're okay. We're okay. Okay. And all right, let's get in here. Keep you and your crew let's safe. Keep okay. you and your crew all safe. Right. And if you can, no, no, we're good. We're good. Tell us what we're, we're seeing there, which is that the we're protesters are, are hurling what you're calling petrol bombs, the Molotov cocktails, and the police are now moving or charging, and they are firing tear gas. Go ahead. Okay, that's. Yep, that's right. And you can see dozens and dozens of riot police moving in. The protesters, Brad, if I can just move our camera, several hundred meters away. And this is the game of cat and mouse that is continually, continually playing out on the streets of Hong Kong. And it really is just quite extraordinary. It, it, One of the largest financial centers in the world has been reduced to this. Um, and obviously this is a, a dangerous and really nerve wracking situation because as I think you've reported, the police have threatened to use live rounds if necessary in terms of crowd control. So you just don't know what's gonna unfold next. Yeah, absolutely. They've been firing rubber bullets, but over the weekend, uh, and again, the police reiterated today during their, their daily news conference that they would use live rounds against protesters. We know that police have shot at, uh, at protesters, they have fired at protesters when they felt that their life has been threatened. Well, police are now saying that they will, they will shoot protesters if they are uh, the target of, of attacks. And, 
And that is what protesters have been doing. This is how they express themselves. This is how they fight back. They hurl these, these petrol bombs. And look, we were up on the campus yesterday, Alison, with these university students who had stockpiled petrol bombs, who'd stockpiled the bricks. They'd smashed up the bricks. They were putting these bricks and petrol bombs in catapults and then firing them at the police below the university. Uh, one of the police officers was hit with a, with a bow and arrow, uh, and we saw plenty of archers on that rooftop who, who said that this is the way that they are defending their university. As far as they are concerned, Alison, these people consider themselves at war with the Hong Kong police. And, and this is which, you know, it begs the question, what is the off-ramp? What is the end game for the protesters and for the police? in that matter. This has been going on for almost six months. And every single weekend and now daily on, on, on the streets, these protests, these violent clashes are, are, are taking place. And Anna, these are pro-democracy protesters, which begs the question, what has been the U.S. response to what they're seeing on these streets overnight? We're just going to move out, John, because it looks like the right police have moved and we might head down to where the protesters are. But your question in relation to the, the pro-democracy, the, these people who want democracy, they, many of them are young, John. They, they've only ever lived under, uh, under the one country, two systems policy. And they feel that China is encroaching on their civil liberties. Uh, they have told me that they would rather die than, than live under China. And in their eyes, even though Hong Kong is supposed to be handed back to mainland China in 2047, the, these kids do not identify as being Chinese. They see themselves as Hong Kongers and, and they are wanting to preserve their way of life. So much so that they are willing to take to the streets and, 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 and risk their lives. Uh, it really is quite extraordinary and, and, and they don't feel that the government is listening. Uh, that is their, their major, uh, major frustration, John. And, do, and they, do they feel that the U.S. government is listening and watching? Sorry, that was your, your question. Uh, the U.S. government, they've obviously appealed time and, and time again. Uh, more, more, okay, these are the raptors who are coming now down the street. These are the ones who actually uh, arrest, make arrests. And there are protesters just here. The US government, uh, Alison, they have time and time again appealed to the US government. And obviously the uh, Human Rights and, and Democracy Act that has been passed by the House of Representatives, it's waiting to be passed by the Senate. Well, we heard from uh, uh, President Trump, who said he may not allow it uh, to, to go ahead. Now, for the people here in Hong Kong, for the people taking to the streets, for the people fighting to, for democracy, they feel like that is just a huge slap in the face. Uh, they feel that, that, uh, that America is, is, is the last bastion when it comes to, to, to democracy and fighting for, for democracy and, and, and the freedom of speech. So really, if, if, if that act is not, if not, is not passed, then who is going to help these protesters. That, that, that is the question, Alison. Anna Corrin, thank you very much for being on the ground there for us. We wouldn't be able to see this without your reporting. Please stay safe. Obviously, we will keep tabs on you and come back as warranted. And, and noting here, you know, those protesters waiting for some kind of voice of support from the United States, it has not come and does not appear to be coming as long as the trade negotiations are going on.